Hello, 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 hello. Uh, we decided to react to this because a bunch of you were saying, Watch Burger Krieg. I didn't know who that was before this, but we're about to find out. We're gonna learn about the vampire clans of Vampire the Masquerade. And eventually, if you guys basically like this video enough, you know, quite literally like, comment, subscribe. If you do all that, then we'll watch more of these videos. The only problem is they are very long. <laughs> I looked at them. I was like, oh, we're going to watch the Changeling video because it's about Faye and Fable's a Faye and he likes Faye and the three hours long. I'm like, uh, maybe if, uh, the audience likes it well enough, we'll, uh, go through that. But for now. So a lot of people have used the past uh, two years of this slowly ending global situation to uh, learn something new useful and interesting while this was going on I oh this is what he was doing during that huh so he's just been going through lore finding his stuff about all these different ah that actually makes sense i don't remember what i was doing i think i was suffering because i was sick I was reading a lot of vampire the masquerade lore now this is one of the biggest mm. role-playing games in the entire world it is played what traditionally yes. at the gaming table but it is also immensely popular in larp it has become such a major cornerstone of... Funny enough, Fable, I did know some people that did play Vampire the Masquerade for a bit, but they stopped because one guy got a little too into it. Would, like, show up dressed like a vampire and whatnot at their oh, workplace. Dear. I don't mean, like, at his own workplace, at the other people's workplace. And they're like, dude, we're, uh, kind of busy here. Yeah, that, that person might have needed some help. Definitely needed some help uh, with something. I'm not sure how I would help them, but uh, they definitely needed some help. They did. The vampire genre, that it gets referenced in persiflage movies and shows like What We Do in the Shadows. And really the main it got question what when we do. coming I mean, up with any piece Vampires of have always been a big thing <sighs> in like circles. It's like they're the... They're basically one of what I call, like, the three pillars of monster movies. We have werewolves, Frankenstein, and vampires. Those are the first ones you usually think of when Halloween comes around, isn't it? And I sometimes add ghost onto that label as well, but ghosts kind of fit into, like, the lesser part of it. But you know what I mean, right? Right. The vampire fiction is, what are the vampires going to be like in this particular word. Almost every culture mm. in the world has some form of vampire myth. Sometimes True. even several. I know the tale of Kresnik, just a little this bit. Kind of creature has been a massive there's also, feature there's also the Jitin Singh, which is that hopping vampire. I'm probably saying it wrong. The Kui Jin. I'm probably completely wrong on the pronunciation, but yeah. It's that a, is a Japanese... Uh, sorry, no, that's a Chinese vampire, isn't it? Yeah. It's also the one that people love to turn into monster girls and make them really hot. Don't ask how I know this. Yeah. I, I, I think I understand uh, why you know it. I'm no, you ask. don't. You're not, you don't know me. You don't know me. Yes, I do. You secretly like dancing in the rain <laughs> with margaritas. How dare you? <laughs> what? The you heard me, guys. you margaritas. There are countless renditions by gun. countless creatives. Hell? So there are so many yeah. options to choose from. There Not to mention, lot of stuff. you can just make new shit up. The answer, Tr vampire. Honestly, that's true. You could sometimes just make new things up, and it probably no one will realize that, and just say, "Oh, I didn't know that about vampires." Masquerade gave to this question like the fact was that Mac likes dancing in the rain with margaritas. No. No, I don't like doing that. What it's, is this new lore you're creating as we speak? It's totally true. It's a thing. It's canon. Uh, no. Wait, no. Yes. Fable, I don't even drink. Yes. There you are said the margaritas were alcoholic. What? In oh, Vampire well. the Masquerade and a whole bunch of bloodlines <laughs> that we're not going to talk about today. Okay. And they all have different attributes and abilities because True. they are descended of the 13 different antediluvian vampires. Yeah, these the are first 13. The vampires of the third generation. And while it is not clear that these are the only vampires of. So wait, they're the vampires of the third generation. What happened to the second one, I wonder? The third generation that ever existed. They are the only 13 ones that survive 
survived the flood, meaning they were the only oh. ones they were able to procreate. This is a very cool fact. Oh, so they're the only 13 vampires that survived Noah's Flood. Oh, um... Wow. Huh. Uh, well, dang, okay. Yeah, whoa. The fact about vampire lore is that it's often ambiguous and contradictory, which not only gives it a that, certain that mystique, makes sense. but also makes it very forgiving to run because nothing is truly completely set in stone. Aside, It's also due to the fact that kind of in Vampire the Masquerade, I know that they kind of like it where hunters don't know everything and sometimes the vampires themselves don't know everything about their lore because some of them just don't really care to record it because it's a chance for the masquerade to be broken which mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense if you're being a secret organization it's probably not the best thing to have records of everything from like the most fundamental details clans are kind of your ethnicity as mm. a vampire or kindred as they prefer in kindred. practice this means that you share certain physical traits why is there a sock on his mic of your clan certain personality attributes I are a lot more frequent don't know. you have been brought into the night through okay. a similar cultural lens and you probably have very strong connections mostly to other members of your clan and yeah look okay. listen i know that this isn't how ethnicity really works oh well, yeah an arbitrary socially constructed category of categories that is used in anthropology however it is the analogy that tracks best okay for what a vampire clan is the thing is just like with ethnicity Every individual is still fundamentally their own person with their uh -huh. own personality, their uh -huh. own goals, abilities, and ambitions. So a given character can be pretty much anything that you want them to be. They don't have to agree with the loose shared ideals and cultural norms of their given clan. That Clans is tend true. to turn, or as they call it, embrace certain specific types of people but you don't become oh. that type of person by being embraced into the clan okay that's not how this relationship it's basically just like being born so it's quite literally being reborn into a new family in a way ultimately you will find every category of person in every given clan of course you will be affected by the prejudices that other oh. people may or may not hold about your particular clan, which yep, is something that unfortunately kind of very closely tracks with ethnicity. Every clan also has yeah. a bane, a particular vampiric weakness yeah. that affects them. Very important though, no matter what clan you are, the sun will fuck you up. Vampiric society hmm. is roughly organized along three major governments or ideologies called sects. Okay. The Camarilla is the biggest and most influential of all of them, where most campaigns I just are. realized that's an onk, basically. Uh, an Egyptian symbol. I don't quite remember what Ankh represents in ancient Egypt. If someone knows in the comments, please tell me. But yeah. It's a apparently a powerful symbol. It's basically just a weird looking Ankh. Set. They're an old school feudalistic society that clearly delineates and illustrates the ranks and positions and social order that okay. they expect everyone to adhere to and they see themselves as the sole legitimate government of so all they believe they're above the everyone. anarchs are an ultimately very ideologically diverse group that at some point said hang on we actually don't like this thing where we just are ruled by mm -hmm. the elders of our clans all the way up to the end basically we have vampire aristocracy quite literally you know controlling the clans saying we have the right over them blah 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 usual stuff and then we have these guys who are the younger generation saying, no, no, you know what? We're going to do our own thing. We like doing our own thing. We're going to take some of the ideas from you, but we're going to do our own thing. Deluvians? Antediluvians, the very existence of which the Camarilla denies, by the way. Kindred. The Anarchs are an ultimately okay. very ideologically diverse group that at some point said, hang on, we actually don't like this thing where we just are ruled by the elders of our clans all the okay. way up to the antediluvians antediluvians the very existence of which the camarilla denies wait they deny the they deny the existence of the antediluvians like do you mean as they're all dead or they deny they ever existed the way. so they did the anarch revolt a while back 
and were mostly crushed by oh. the forces of the Camarilla and oh. the Human Inquisition. The Sabah Oh, they used the Human Inquisition also. God damn. Oh, well, I didn't realize the Anarchs were crushed. Damn. Kind of the ISIS of the Anarch Revolt. Oh. They became a very powerful organization oh, dedicated religiously to the Jihad, which is the process of the oh, younger great. generations destroying the elders so they can gain freedom from their rule and then rule humanity in turn. And even they do this is what I do know about the Sabbat, is they quite literally believe they should rule over humanity. They are better than humans. They should use them as... Basically turn it into that one anime that I can't remember the name of that was about vampires somehow releasing a disease that uh, kills off all older, like, humans at, like, 18 or, like, 20. And then so they basically manipulate the... It's a whole thing. ...all the world openly, they still stick to the masquerade, which is... A rule that kind of everyone adheres to because yeah. they know that if humans find out vampires exist on that the That they kill everyone. Again, they kill... They will, like... They will kill all the vampires. Quite literally. If humans found out vampires were real, we would be hunting them down. Kill most of them? Because again, we don't I like will... the idea of gi basically giant ticks that constantly need to feed on us and want to control us. There is no human alive that I feel like likes to be controlled to that well, point. Well, now give you an overview of all the 13 different vampire clans. And instead of ordering them alphabetically, I have ordered them by relevance. In terms okay. of how likely you are to get in touch and how important they are going to be in a standard Vampire the Masquerade campaign, also called a Chronicle. We will start with the I didn't realize they were called Chronicles, but, uh, okay, go on. Christian clans of the Camarilla, a distinction that is informal and mostly relevant to people who are interested in large-scale international Camarilla politics. Oh. Because these are the three clans Vampire that Agrestar between them right. hold the most princedoms, a.k.a. the most of the cities are ruled by these three clans. Keep in okay. mind once again that there are princes of every clan in various different cities around the world and also any given member of a clan can be part of any given type of government or institution in the world of vampires. The grandiose okay. and powerful clan Ventru, also uh. known as the Blue Bloods, or the Clan of Kings, represents the aristocratic mm. Machiavellian ah. type of vampire with access to vast, vast wealth. Throughout mm. history, they have occupied the position of pragmatic rulers of worldly matters, okay. be that as knights during the medieval era or oh. wealthy industrialists today. And they do, in fact, see themselves as the rightfully ruling clan over all the other vampires, because of what would the rabble do. do without their guidance? Even to this <laughs> day, God. a significant portion of new embraces into the clan of kings come from actual like real world nobility of course in the old world more so than the new for obvious reasons aristocrats tend to have mm. very big bank accounts and a sense yeah. of decorum which are two things that the ventru really care about they are Quite literally old money changing new money into old money well they really are just believe that they are better than everyone because they have money and influence Often uh. embrace of successful business people or people who they reckon have the potential to become very successful business people. But also As stalwart expected. figures in military or law enforcement positions ah. that demonstrate good leadership and administrative skills. Before the embrace actually happens, there's usually a prolonged interview process, which obviously the intended uh. recruit knows nothing about. Ah. They just think they're meeting very frequently with a very... I was wondering if it was an actual interview, but no. Yeah, that makes sense. They would keep it quiet. Julia business partner that has taken a strange interest in them. This is then followed by intense and comprehensive coaching, some might call it micromanaging, to instruct the new arrival in the ways of the clan and the ways of the Camarilla. The clan has access to okay. the disciplines dominate, which is mind control, fortitude, Makes which sense. is supernatural toughness, okay. and presence, which is incredible allure and charisma, making oh. them very powerful social characters 
that are rather difficult to take down because of their physical and mental resilience. Between yeah, that sounds about right for them being able to control and mess with people's minds. Between you and me, though, the Ventru only need one discipline, and it's called money. money. The yeah. Ventru clan bane is their rarefied tastes. Every kindred mm. knows that not all blood is created equal, and the Ventru can stomach only the finest caviar. Every <laughs> sure. Ventru... <laughs> they can only drink, like, really good blood. Who has a particular type of person that they like to drink blood from, and they have immense the difficulty hell? drinking blood from people who do not have that attribute. <laughs> this attribute can be affected what is by the anything attribute? so long as it is oh. common. Uh, it could be twins, it oh. could be vegans, it could be vegans. morbidly obese people, it could be people who can do calculus in their head good. It could be morbidly. This is strangely specific. I meant like blood good. types who are just people that take care of their body well. Every clan also has a compulsion, which is a particular neurosis that their beast, their vampiric side, will every once in a while really try to drive at the forefront of their mind. But the okay. true, this is arrogance. They need to <laughs> rule. They need to be in uh, charge. Yeah, they I think they're doing that part really obey well. Obey their command. The Ventru Antediluvian uh. is called, drumroll please, Ventru. <laughs> Very creative there, World of Darkness. I won't lie. Fable, you're still there? Yeah, I'm still here. This is goofy, though. The I... I'm not surprised it was named Ventru. And not only is there very little known about him at all, but also officially, in keeping with Camarilla yeah. policy, Clan Ventru denies his existence. Because Evidence they suggests, however, that he went to India after ah. the destruction of the first city in the flood, because basically most of the clan's ancient history takes place in India. So huh. notable Ventru include Fiorenza Saverna, who, despite being rather young, is a very influential figure in the intercity connections. So basically they deny him because that would mean he would have power over them if he's still alive somehow. Especially in Central America. Mithras, who yes, is the sun god Mithras, which is brilliant. Sun god Mithras? What the hell? Okay. Because if anyone asks you why you are only out at night, you can just tell them that you've been hauling the sun across the sky. And Lucine, <laughs> what the hell? a powerful Justicar dedicated solely to her mission of eradicating the worst and most dangerous enemies of the Camarilla. The ah. gorgeous and creative Clan Toreador, also known Toreador. as the Roses or the Clan of Vanity, represents oh the highly seductive erotic type of oh. vampire with an impeccable Wonderful. sense of style. They are practically... So we have the aristocracy with taste and money and peak and everything around them have to be just the way you want, yes. Love with human civilization and culture, seeing themselves as the ultimate arbiters of what is based and what is cringe. Because they're creative... Oh my sparks. god, they're painters, Fable. They're painters. They're artists. Oh no... Nothing tend to disappear the over the artist. centuries. They ultimately often take up mm. the roles of patrons. Which is kind of funny, because I've never heard of an artist that usually lives all that long. Or a very successful one. For those who don't know, usually very successful artists are usually very depressed. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. Of the art, so they're all in the entertainment industry. Consequently, mm. Toreador are primarily... Oh, they basically run the entertainment industry. There's one that runs, like, big industry. Okay. Three major groups. Artists mm. of all stripes and definitions. Just as I thought. From sculptors to writers to figure skaters. Notable connoisseurs of art, like agents, uh, critics, or investors. Okay, and so finally, they like them. Just people who look good. <laughs> That's a very valuable thing to have for the Tory. The process of initiation Sounds into the about right. can be quite nice. You get all this love and attention from this powerful old being, and you have all your old and new incredible needs taken care of. Some okay. might say you are being love-bombed, and thus ultimately become highly dependent on your sire. And without Oh, so it's a whole kind of gaslighting thing to basically... Because artists are usually artists, uh, someone that usually criticize art are usually talked down upon, they're usually depressed. So to have someone talk up to you to constantly see that you are truly great or nah, 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 get that confidence reaffirmment 
can be addictive. Particular Toriador can be in how easily bored they can get. Oh. You might just be dropped by the sidelines for a single misstep, or just because some new fascination entered their lives. Oh, the wow. clan has access to the discipline's all specs, which are highly sharpened senses, Makes celerity, sense. which is super speed, and presence, oh. which, like with the Ventru, is the great charisma. Alluring charisma. And yes, I will be repeating what each of these mean just so you can learn them. The Toriador okay. clan bane is their aesthetic fixations, as they are so incredibly obsessed with aesthetics that they cannot they like care stand about feng not shui. being surrounded by things that satisfy their own personal beauty standards. This doesn't uh. need to be like the objective high art. There can also be people who feel comfortable in like a trash can Oscar <laughs> Rouch kind of milieu <laughs> and they would feel very irritated in like a high society restaurant. It used uh. to be in older editions they would just get absolutely transfixed with something beautiful that they would oh. see, but I reckon they changed this because a few too many Toreador got transfixed with the beauty of the sunrise. This oh! Oh! Yeah, that would, um... Considering they're ne probably never allowed to see the sun... Again, that that would make sense to want to stop that. It's represented in the newest edition, Vampire 5, with their compulsion, which is obsession, by which they really become hyper fixated on some particular thing, be it a person, a hobby, could be a particular song that they just have stuck in their head, and they're thinking about this thing mm. all of the time, and they just cannot get it out. So Interesting. basically, so all it's have OCD, ADHD, and borderline personality disorder. The Tor so basically, yeah, they're artists. I mean, I have ADD. Fable. Fable's dead. All hail the new Fable. Anyway. Toreador Antediluvian is Arakel, also known oh. as Ishtar, the most beautiful woman ever. Fable. What? Uh. I'm here. I, uh, uh, I had to mute my mic because uh, loud ambulance outside, and oh. then I moved my mic slightly, and then it got disconnected, and I'm just like, well, that's, that's kind of dumb. Yeah, that is very dumb. What the hell? Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, no, those, uh, those... Those um, hardest vampires are kind of annoying. Yeah, the Toriodor, where they basically yes. have huge fixations on things. Which, yeah, basically, as he put it, they have ADHD. Which, yeah. I'll admit, I do know quite a few artists that do. Ever lived or unlived. And so do or I. Ever will live or unlived. Except I'm not an artist. I can't paint for shit. First city where she danced with bulls. Some oh. claim she is actually the oldest of the antediluvians, and even others claim that she is the twin sister of the antediluvian Malkav. Some notable Toreador oh. include Rafael de Corazon, probably the most well known of the co founders of the Camarilla. His last name is literally in Spanish ha heart Corazon. Oh. Corazon. Corazon? Yeah, Corazon. Yeah, it is definitely hard in Spanish. Catherine yeah, of Montpellier, uh, historian Montpellier. and probably the most influential oh. cultural trendsetter of the vampiric society of continental mm. Europe. And Melinda Galbraith, who oh. was actually the leader of the Sabbat for oh. a while, even though she was pretending to be of a different clan. The secretive ah. and conniving clan Tremere, also Tremere. known as the Warlocks or the Pyramid, represents A vampire wizard's fable. I think that's what they are. Oh no, the vampire wizards. It's the kind of vampire what can no, do magic. No, first Even artist wizards and now vampire wizards, no. Well, the first one, other wizard. These are like blood wizards. No, they things. are one of the most powerful clans in the Camarilla no, and everyone- blood magic. Pretty much. It's to deal with them, nobody really trusts them. And this isn't just I mean, because that makes they sense. can do fucking magic, <laughs> but also because they kind of are a very young clan and stole oh. their vampiric heritage. Like, what do you mean stole their vampiric heritage? Okay. people that the Tremere embrace very a lot because they have this whole complicated process of asking various people for permission so that the leadership oh. of the clan can determine who might be useful to the clan in the near future. They do have a tendency to embrace intellectuals, especially the kind of intellectual that has mm. a little bit of a fascination with the occult. But ah. probably the most important trait to have is an inborn tendency to accept authority. Because the... Oh. To the just Tremere accept... 
are very authoritarian. Perhaps oh, well, <laughs> they're going for people that have interestingly occult and a wait and are fine with authoritarian. I, that doesn't really mix very well usually. Because usually those are the type of people that try to look into secret society stuff don't really view authority as all that Perhaps good. because they are not particularly old, they are the most explicitly organized of all of the clans, and they have a very strict chain of command, the pyramid, as mentioned before, obedience to which was not so long ago enforced oh. through the practice of blood bonding. That ah. whole command structure has sort of deteriorated a little bit after the Second Inquisition destroyed the clan's Good. headquarters in Vienna, but a lot of chronicles Good. still play it the old-fashioned way. The clan has access to the discipline's auspex, which is highly sharpened senses, dominate, which is mind control, and blood sorcery, which oh. in older editions was known by the much cooler term thaumaturgy, Kind of self-explanatory, but also not because it's a very yeah. broad subject matter. This makes them ideal for perceiving magic, doing magic, okay. and also ruling with an iron fist. The Tremere... I mean, if they can literally do magic against each other, that makes them a lot harder to deal with. Clan Bane used to be that they could be very easily bloodbound, aka made obedient, to other vampires, but now with the shattering oh. of the pyramid, it's actually become the inverse of that, oh. and that they cannot blood bind other kindred. Which of course- Oh, that's very bad for them because they like to control stuff. Oh, oh, dear God. Force gives a huge blow to their authoritarian structure. Exactly. Their particular compulsion is called perfectionism, and it's just this ah. overwhelming need to get this thing just perfectly right. Oh. And nothing short of an absolutely stellar performance will set their minds right again. Now, the thing oh. about the Tremere Antediluvian is that he is Saulot, who is also oh. known as the vampire who actually is kind of a good guy. And oh. he had a whole clan of his own, which is now hunted pretty much completely to extinction. But the founder of Clan Tremere was actually Tremere. Stellar performance will set their minds okay, right. Okay, I gotta Now, the this. thing about the Tremere Antediluvian is that he is Saulot, who is also known as the vampire who actually is kind of a good guy. Okay. And he had a whole clan of his own, which is now hunted pretty much completely to extinction. I kind of want to know about Saulot then. Yeah, okay. But the founder of Clan Tremere was actually Tremere. A very powerful mage who found a ritual to turn himself into a pig, I mean vampire, and then proceeded oh. to diabolize Saulot, which means drinking his heart blood to consume his soul oh. in order to elevate his own power and legitimize his clan. Now, fun From, uh... funny thing is, the goal he had was to become vampires without losing access to the magic, okay. which is not what happened at all. <laughs> they did lose their magic, all of them, big time. Which was a problem because that's the one thing that they wanted to have them set apart. Yeah. Which led to the very interesting current situation yeah. where the Banu Hakim are going, hang, hang, on, hang on a second, right okay. there. This is th the thing that you do with the magic. That's just our blood magic with the serial numbers filed off. Some notable hmm. Tremere include John D, who was a historical, actual, real-world figure that oh. existed in the real world, but he you know, wasn't a vampire, mm. and is the current leader of all Tremere in the British Isles. Ashley okay. Sturbridge, who is very young, but nonetheless a very powerful regent of the Chantry of New York. And Sri okay. Sansa, who is notable to me personally because he fucked a lot. What? And I think that's cool. <laughs> the passionate and free-spirited clan Bruja, also known as the Zealots or the Learned oh. Clan, represents... We didn't get a lot from Clan Tremere. I kind of want to learn how the hell he just drank the... became vampire, then drank... Salot's blood in the boo. Well, is we're going through all the clans, so uh, tell me more about Salot down below if you can, please. I am very curious. And Fable's uh, making. Oh wait. It's chances are I'm gonna make a random assumption. Chances are he either found a vampire from that specific clan that gave him this blood, or, or like Common was trying to do a story where a bunch of rich nobles. Uh, found a underground network, and we're starting to drink vampire uh, vampire blood to get to get more of an immortality thing. That does there are like... some the... there are some like stories though about people actively trying to look into um, supernatural ways of immortality. Yeah, that is true. I was just wondering how did they keep their vampire 
How did they keep their magic if the one thing that they were trying to do while becoming vampire in the old world, and they lost their magic? Because they're very obviously wizards that wanted to become the immortal, but the classic punk rock archetype you know. of vampire. Oh. Once upon mm. a time, some might have called them a patrician clan of the Camarilla as well, but they would have uh. vehemently fought against the that definition because they identify with the proletariat, with the uh. oppressed masses yearning for liberation. And the Bruja are right there with them to challenge authority, to fight the good fight. Bruja don't really have a lot of rules Wait, about question. who they embrace. Okay. Uh, though You're saying Bruja, isn't that just... That's you know, Spanish, that's Spanish for a witch, yes. Yeah. I, that, I'm like, every time I heard it, I'm like, is he just saying witch in Spanish? He's saying bruja. Yes, he is, but they just, that's apparently the name of Vampire Clan. Maybe their their uh, leader was uh, a witch? Uh, I don't know. A Spanish I, witch? I guess so, because that's a very weird name to use for a, for a uh, clan of not witches. Mm-hmm. It yeah, usually yeah, tends to be weird. people... Uh, and they seem... And since they're, like, against the authority of the people, the name Bruja kind of makes more sense because which is, you know, outcast, that kind of thing. But, yeah, okay. I... But, yeah, I don't know. Press groups, or even more frequently, agents who are trying to change the status quo, usually oh, from, that's like, they embrace. counterculture scenes, or, let's they, say... They embrace rockers, and, like gang members who are trying to like tear, tear down the establishment certain groups that uh, would do certain ops in order to achieve certain political goals so essentially middle class kids who don't need to hold down three jobs to pay the bills and thus have the time to do high commitment activism now while yeah. they are pretty cool a lot of players like to romanticize them away from the fact that they are just hardcore ideologues who enjoy mm. revolution for the sake of breaking <laughs> shit. Many do they... <laughs> so they're anarchists, more or less. Because they just want to break shit. Believe in anything for the sake of believing it. They just believe in it because it is different than what they perceive to be the status quo. As such, you mm. will find a lot of hardcore tankies, Nazis, uh. oh. Khmer Rouge enthusiasts, oh. and people who post about politics oh. on Twitter among the ranks of the Bruja. They're okay, also known nope. for giving little to no guidance to their childer. Very oh. often they don't even know who their sire is or what even is going on with them, and so they die pretty quickly. Because of course God helping damn. a youngling navigate the complex intricacies of the oh. night in vampiric society is a huge responsibility, and Bruja will avoid that kind of thing like the play. Frankly, I Okay, so... Yeah... Uh... I think I get it from this, but they basically are sink or swim kind of people. And also they just... They, they like revolution for the sake of revolution. They don't want to build anything back up. They just want to take advantage of it and have fun. Oh dear. Yeah, that's not good. I respect that. The clan has access to the discipline celerity, which is super speed, potence, which is super strength, okay. and presence, which is alluring charisma, making them very intuitively well-rounded. Their powers are not some weird stuff. They're just human abilities driven to a great extreme. All yeah. of this also makes them extremely dangerous opponents in combat. Makes the Bruhar clan bane is their violent temper. They uh. just have a big problem keeping the unbridled rage of their inner beast at bay. They are much more likely to frenzy than any other clan. In terms okay. of compulsion, they feel strongly drawn to rebellion, needing to piss in the face of the person that oh. they perceive to be in charge, or in some other way transgress against what would be the orderly way of doing things in this situation. Wow. The Bruja Antediluvian was Troil the Elder, an extremely mm. calm and dispassionate guy who got diablerized by his child, Troil the Younger. Who oh, so that's why, because it was a diablerized person. Whose unbridled burning passion then became the bane of their clan as punishment for their transgression against their sire. So Basically, because do you know what, um, uh, what diabolizing is, Fable? Uh, not really. Uh, it's basically when a vampire drinks another vampire to death. They basically drink up their soul. Huh. I didn't know that was a thing. Yes, so apparently vampires can drink other vampires, but if they do it to the point where they're basically death, they diabolize and they basically become crazed and unhinged. 
It's basically like Surprise. if a human becomes a cannibal. Surprisingly, I've done something kind of similar like that to my in my D and D game. Well, not vampires per se, but more in my first D and D game. Uh, the main bad guy was literally killing other dragons, and I had it set that he was eating their hearts, and I basically had it. Um, yeah, I didn't remember exactly what I called it, but pretty much the lore behind it was. You know how dragons become more powerful the more they age, but to yeah. age they have to get all the way to like the thousands of years? Yeah. So basically this was a way to artificially increase their power by making them stronger. However, the more hearts they ate, the more insane they became. Yeah. Man. So it was like a way to get more power, but I made it so that because you ate around like four or five of them, he had become, he went from an adult to near ancient but his but his level of insanity had become worse so when the party finally met him although he looked sane he was really going crazy inside his head and it was just like yeah this is a pretty good plot point yeah so I, I, I did I, something I, similar like that i like to think like when you like do that to magical creatures like forcibly do that instead of like them giving you their power or them like saying here i'm about to die take my string or something it's basically their soul rebelling against you like pushing around in your body refusing to work with you that's causing you to go yeah. insane yeah because um i also had it said that because like he was not only just attacking uh the similar dragon types to make him stronger he was also eating other ones and chromatic and just being like you're trying to eat an element that doesn't agree with you of course it's gonna make you even more insane because that soul or that energy is gonna be fighting inside you so yeah it was a very interesting thing it was also my way of artificially increasing the uh, uh the end game boss to make him even stronger because but, i was like i want yeah. to show him being evil but yeah yeah i kind of like that i would also do it like he did it underhandedly like in my kind of idea dragons are beings of power they're like okay you beat me good enough if they're like a good natured dragon but if you're like do it underhandedly or like cheat or all this they're like no no okay. right that's my thought on it. Anyway. Eligible Bruja include Theo Bell, uh -huh. who is kind of responsible for them officially leaving the Camarilla and uh -huh. mainly aligning themselves with the Anarch movement now. Smiling Jack Drake, a Smiling pirate Jack. in life from what? that golden age of piracy, who later became a very influential uh -huh. figure in the Californian Anarch Free State. And Tyler, who was one of the primary leaders of the Anarch Revolt. The enigmatic uh -huh. and mutated... Okay, so Bruja are basically just... From what I hear, because he deliberized, delab the soul of his career was basically like, no, I'm screwing with you and I curse all all people under you to have this crazed the rage. Nosferatu, also known uh. as the Sewer Rats or the Clan of the Hidden, represents oh. the hideously misshapen Count Orlok type vampire. Now, yeah. even though you will definitely recognize a Nosferatu as Ugh. being a Nosferatu when you see one, they are nonetheless masters of espionage, and you should always assume that there is a Nosferatu in the room with you right now. Uh, yeah, from what I know, Cross, Nosferatu are horribly ugly. Like, you ever seen the movie Nosferatu? Yeah. Or they all look like that. Even though they're looked down upon by polite vampire society, their abilities are nonetheless highly uh, valued. And apparently just being outside for them is basically a breach of the masquerade. <laughs> sought after by the Camarilla. The Nosferatu embrace from two groups of people who could mm -hmm. not be more distinct. Okay. On one hand, you have extreme social outcasts, such as Makes homeless sense. people or drug addicts. But they also, much like the Toreador, like to embrace exceptionally beautiful people. Unlike oh. the Toreador, they do this as a punishment for their arrogance and cruelty to the people who are less privileged than them. So becoming Makes sense. a Nosferatu of all the kindred world is probably the first choice of few people. Their status as outcasts does give them a sort of increased cohesion within the clan. And makes they sense. tend to be actually rather kind to each other. And that actually does make sense because it's a shared kind of pain that you have with each other and being outcasts. It's just the difference is you're a different kind of society now. In a parallel society of the vast sprawling underworlds of every city in the world, 
clan counts for more than sect. So you have cordial relations between Nosferatu of the Camarilla, okay. the Sabbat, and Anarchs. The clan has access to the discipline's animalism, which is control over animals, huh. obfuscate, which allows them to become undetectable, and potence, which is super strength. This, these can all work really well towards being espionage, really. Making them not only perfect spy masters, but also dangerous ambush predators. The Nosferatu clan bane is that they're ugly as shit. <laughs> That's it. That is the bank. Right, okay, so the reason this is the case is because when they turn into vampires, they undergo a transformation, extremely painful, by the way, oh. that completely changes the way that they look. And many of them no. even end up being unable to exist even as a vampire, because that is how far they have mutated. Oh. Some are even wow. more hideous than the average Nosferatu. A very small select group Whoa. is not quite as disgusting, but any Nosferatu, the second you see them, you will immediately know this is not a human, yeah. but some form of horrible monster, making it rather difficult for them to uphold the masquerade. Yeah. <laughs> being horrifying, being a, looking like a horrifying monster kind of makes everyone go, yeah, you're not human. The clan compulsion is cryptophilia. Which what? is an intense need to know secret information that very few people are privy to. Oh, this is probably also one of the driving forces behind why they seem to know everything. The Nosferatu antediluvian is Absimiliad, a oh. massive asshole psychopath piece of shit. Oh, was also incredibly handsome, and as such was punished for his appearance to reflect the appearance of his soul. He hates all his- Oh, so he's a bad person who literally had his- who literally had his wonderful looks taken away so that he looks exactly how he is. ...born and seeks to exterminate them, but of course, with the Nosferatu being a Camarilla clan, they mostly don't even know he exists. Who know okay. everything. The Nosferatu oh. antediluvian oh is absimiliad. A massive asshole psychopath piece of shit who was also incredibly handsome and as such was punished for his appearance to reflect the appearance of his soul. He hates all his spawn and seeks uh. to exterminate them, but of course, with the Nosferatu being a Camarilla clan, they mostly don't even know he exists. Some prominent Nosferatu include Zelios. A genius uh. architect and stonecutter who constructs elaborate labyrinths for reasons okay. that only he quite understands. Baba Yaga, who is oh. believed by some to be the progenitor of all modern members of the clan because she was the only one of Absimilian's childer who ended up procreating. And Kaleros, oh. who for Ugh. a while was the Camarilla Prince of New York City. The wild and independent... Well then... Nosferatu seems like the mo the least appealing clan, considering your own sire or your own interluvian just wants to kill all of you. And Clan Gangrel, also known as the Outlanders or the Clan of the Beast, is oh. the archetypal country vampire that lives in the wilderness and is really more animal than person. Vampires okay. are generally city people. They prefer to not be in the wilderness, <laughs> where there is little in the way of consistent shelter and a lot in the way of dangerous shit. This is Yeah, I honestly kind of expected that from vampires because they always have to stay out of the sun somehow. Or, you know, they burn to nothing. Not true for the Gangrel, who even when they are in what? cities prefer to stick to the parks and outskirts. Okay. They also like to travel a lot, and they are the only clan that is even somewhat respected by the werewolves. They prefer huh. to embrace people who are- That's actually interesting. They're the old- I didn't think any vampire clan would be respected by the werewolf clans, but I guess I was wrong. Are ...unafraid and have a will to survive. This often happens, like, pretty spur of the moment when a victim vehemently resists feeding, which is actually difficult because mm. getting oh. fed on by a vampire apparently feels very, very nice. But they will also sometimes pick out people that they notice are unafraid of moving through the wilderness at night. And so they... So basically they're big countrymen or wilderness people that just love to stay out late at nights. Or maybe farmers and ranchers. They will stalk and observe them, sometimes over a period of several months before embracing them if they find them worthy. Very few gangrel will ask you if you want to become a vampire, yeah. and actually if you are a gangrel and you had the choice 
of becoming a vampire and took it, people are going to look down on you in the clan. That's uh, kind of something that they think is weak. The clan has access so to... So basically the they're big on animalistic strength, you know, actually taking things. Animalism, which gives them Quite. control over animals. Fortitude, which is supernatural toughness. Okay. And protein, which gives them the ability to gain animal features or even transform fully into animals. Okay. The Gangrel clan bane is that they gain bestial features when they frenzy. Uh, so this might be like uh, bat ears that then appear. Oh. Or they have like a strong dog stench. It used to be they would then have this feature forever. But they changed this in mm. Vampire 5. Because I guess they realized that uh, if you have a frenzy once. Like early on in the game. Yeah. Which will most definitely happen to you at some point. <laughs> yeah, you have a you're kind of get screwed luck, over. You become just a walking masquerade violation without the benefit of having obfuscate as a clan discipline like the Nosferatu do. So now those yeah. features go away after a while. The clan compulsion is feral impulses, which okay. every once in a while will yeah. really drive the gangrel to resolve a dispute through violence. The purest actual form of showing who is strongest yeah, showing and dominance and best to survive and not this words bullshit because <laughs> they will have a pretty hard time talking the gangrel antediluvian is annoya and it's very difficult uh, to ascertain any information about her because i might have to turn this all away the about annoya is passed through gangrel lines via oral storytelling and so ah. there's a million different versions of annoya i'm still watching she the video by the way been raised by wolves oh that's one thing that may have happened. Some notable gangrel okay. include Cuthbert Beckett, a very notable scholar and archaeologist looking into the true origins of vampire kind. Okay. Odin the All High, who is what? yes indeed that particular Odin. That He's he actually Odin. <laughs> He hell? isn't originally Scandinavian, oh. he just ended up there. And Xavier, huh. who was a very powerful Justicar of the Camarilla, before officially declaring that his clan was now going to leave the Camarilla and join the Anarch movement. Oh. The Imperial and Neurotic... Well, that's good. The clan Malkavian, also known oh. as the Cassandras, or the Clan of the Moon, represents the sort of telepathic, psychic-type vampire, though they do still drink blood. The Malkavians okay. are a funny little group because they have changed a lot over the years of the oh. game's existence. They used okay. to be just straight-up crazy people. There was sometimes an attempt at doing a serious exploration of mental health. But of course, as the topic in general has moved more into the space of public acceptance, yeah. it's become a bit more labor-intensive to actually deal with it properly. And personally, I think Vampire the Masquerade does a very good job with that. Basically, oh, they're that's all good. in tune with this psychic network that they all share, and through which they have a very loose telepathic connection to each other. But of course, hmm. every node in that network has their own little particular idiosyncrasies that distorts the view of the whole. They're an extremely okay. diverse clan in whom they embrace because it tends to be mental oddballs and there's a lot of different ways in which you can be a mental oddball. But yeah. there does seem to be a certain, not preference, but just a statistically higher likelihood of them embracing intellectuals because they tend to be celebrated more for their oddballness and so hide it less. The clan ah. has access to the discipline's all specs, which is Basically highly... intellectuals such as a certain kind of painter that has some sort of disability that people... There used to be a thing, I mean there still kind of is a thing where people... Uh, basically look fondly upon or uplift someone who has a mental disability or some kind of disability that paints or does something. It doesn't always happen, but I feel like it's kind of mean to all the other painters that do. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Shop I'm senses. not going to have Stop. this conversation because I don't fully talk about it or know about it. Which is mind control, and obfuscate, which allows them to become undetectable. They used okay. to have a discipline called dementation, which is now an amalgam power of dominate and obfuscate, which once again, I'm not particularly happy with. But basically what it does is it makes other people go crazy. The oh. Malkavian clan bane is their- Actually, that would be cool. I don't know why they took that away. Action perspective. They all have some wild and often destructive mental health disorder that they had a sort of predilection for 
during their life, even if there it never manifested. And no amount of therapy can help them with it. The clan oh. compulsion is their propensity for delusion because though they are connected through this magical, powerful network that can give them very meaningful visions of things that might happen in the future and things that are happening right now, okay. they also can just as likely receive just complete bullshit <laughs> streams of thought oh. that will deeply upset their frame of mind. Trust me, I have quite a few schizophrenia symptoms myself. Oh. I know what I'm talking about. The Malkavian antediluvian is called Malkav, and some okay. people think that he is physically, or, you know, rather non-physically, the actual telepathic network that connects all Malkavians. That's interesting. As such, even though they're a Camarilla clan, the Malkavians are not as religious in their denial of their antediluvian but then they are Malkavians, so nobody listens to them anyway. And <laughs> yeah, they all, the Malkavians always kind of talk a little crazy. The Camarilla doesn't really care. Some notable Malkavians include Anatole, who has for the past couple centuries been predicting the end of the world, and it turns out that he actually is correct. <laughs> Therese oh. Bullman, who is the Anarch Baron of Santa Monica, and who oh, appeared her. in the video game Vampire the Masquerade yeah. Bloodlines. Boy, and none other than Alistair Crowley what? himself, who, believe it or not, is also the sire of Jekyll and Hyde. The ruthless what? and Darwinistic clan Did Lassonde. you hear him? Mr. Jekyll and... Yes. Yes, he was a vampire. I... I don't know how to feel about that, in all yeah. honesty. Mostly because, like... I I get a lot of historical figures, especially fictional ones, can fit into certain narratives. But that one is kind of weird. Yeah, that's a little weird. I, that comes out of left field for me. Bro, also known as the Keepers, or the Night Clan, represent the archetypal type of vampire that is a shadow being. Huh? I, I don't know that that's a thing that exists. I mean, I guess someone that always lurks in the shadows. But it is cool, and it fits thematically. A good way True. of describing the La Sombra is that they're the Ventru of the Sabbat. They are extremely oh. capable of constructing and navigating complex social structures, so they run the administrative and down-to-earth side of the anti-Camarilla sect. And they are very selective in their embraces. You have uh. to be a perfect match for what your sire is looking for, and they will then completely and utterly annihilate your livelihood over the course of years wow. in order to test the unbreakability of your drive and willpower. If at That's the insane. end of all that, you're still focused, grinding, trying to secure the bag, they will reveal themselves to you. Interestingly, a lot of La Sombra are sailors. They're what? for some reason very closely associated with the sea, which I don't know how that fits, but I, I like don't. it. And also the Catholic Church and religious institutions in general, but specifically the Catholic Church, the La Sombra, are deeply embedded in. Oh, and this is boy. just another way in which they're sort of like an evil counterpart to the Venture, even though, I mean, the Venture are already kind of fucking evil. In that yeah. they will use anything to climb the social order. The clan has access to the discipline's dominate, which is mind control. Okay. Oblivion, which used to be called obtenebration and was their ability to control the shadows. And you'll understand later why I'm so very angry about this. I mean, why? It seems like it had a cool name before. Why change it? And potence, which is super strength. The clan bane is actually something very classic in that they don't cast proper reflections, not even on like- Oh, that's actually kind of cool way to add that in. Digital cameras. Though you probably will be able to identify them as themselves, the whole thing is going to be just busy with like shadowy artifacts and transparency so there's issues, a lot of shadows to the point them. where if you're unlucky it might even be a masquerade violation this has led to the ironic situation that the clan which utterly despises the idea of humans having any sort of position or value within vampire society uh, are dependent on them for just basic things like telling that is them wonderful. how they look and having them pick out good outfits. That is actually wonderful. They ha they need humans for that. The common compulsion that their beast drives them to is ruthlessness. They need to win. They need to achieve this goal. And they will do anything, sacrifice anyone to achieve that 
Failure okay. is not an option. The Lasombra Antediluvian went by many names, so people just tend uh. to call him Lasombra. Now, the funny thing about Lasombra is that even though the Bruja would really like to claim this honor for themselves, they are actually the ones who kicked off the Anarch Revolt by uh. diablerizing their Antediluvian. He was the first Antediluvian diablerized after the destruction of the first city, which is like so far in the past that the overwhelming majority of people don't even know that that was a thing. Well then, that's um, crazy. And he was diabolized by the youngest of his child, Gratiano de Veronese. Some notable Sabat include Lucita de Aragon, who was a Spanish princess and later became a very, very powerful okay. archbishop in the Sabat. Zatiel oh. ben Aron, one of the absolute grandmasters of Optenebration. And Gian Galeazzo Visconti, who, this is my favorite vampire, the Masquerade story. sorry. Basically this guy, he got bored with the Sabat because it's a very violent and direct kind of place. Yeah. So what he did is he took all the Sabat hardliners in his city, Milan, and he switched from Sabat Archbishop to being a Camarilla Prince oh. by just killing all of them. And the reason for this <laughs> is that he found the intrigue and complicated politics of the Camarilla more, more interesting. interesting. Yeah. The stately and indifferent Clan Samizzi, also known as the Fiends or the Tamizzi. Old Clan. Wait, that's a symbol of or the Ouroboros eating its own tail. Represents the classic yeah. Eastern European dracula style vampire what yeah well i was about to say what does he mean by that but we're about to learn what he means with a bit of a twist probably the most inhuman of all the clans they don't even hate like regular living mortal people anymore they just torture and deform them for uh, pleasure to wow. continue an earlier analogy the Tamizi are sort of the toreador of the sabbat the great philosophers of sadism who are solely focused on the question of what it means to be vampire. vampire. Because ah, they don't really care about humans all that much, they tend to embrace absolutely massively exceptional people who just happen to strike their fancy at that particular moment. In order to maximize ah. the potential of kindred, because that's all that humans are to them, is just like little seeds that maybe or maybe not or blood could bags. have potential in some way to actually build something worthwhile out of they have instituted centuries long breeding programs to oh. get the traits that they find most interesting that's horrifying yeah, this is how bad they are and to be clear that's completely an early eugenics horrifying. is one of the least of their crimes being uh, a, a oh. traditional clan that cares a lot uh. about their own history the Tsumitsi are known to be very very polite and hold especially the Lords of Hospitality in almost religious regard. This is, Lords of course, of primarily because they are complete sociopaths who uh. are fully on the orange and blue morality spectrum, and these kinds of very strict rules are the only thing that keeps them together. The clan has oh. access to the discipline's animalism, which is control over animals, dominate, which is mind control, and protein, which in their case is the ability to shape flesh. In a oh. time where disciplines were not designed uh. efficiency to death, this was called vicissitude, and it's the main standout ability of their clan that they will physically change themselves and others, usually more others. Oh, they can do that to other ways, people. But they also change uh. themselves to be whatever they want to be, often going very far away from the human form. And this is now uh. an amalgam power of Dominate and Protea. The Clan Bane is called Grounded, and it used to be that they needed to sleep surrounded by their own grave soil. But in B5, oh. they changed this into something that I personally think is a lot cooler in that now they need to sleep surrounded by something that is ironically a very core cool aspect of like their their mortal identity that they used to have like their particular castle or maybe okay. their ethnic group could still be grave soil by the way this also kind hmm. of means that the Tsumitsu don't really travel all that much it's a bit of a logistical challenge the clan compulsion uh. is covetousness which is also a classic vampire thing to do where they like see something that they really 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 want for themselves and they and will go to great it. lengths to get it. The Tsumitsi oh. Antediluvian is known oh, as the eldest, and though as members of the Sabat, of course, they are rather happy that this creature is no more, yeah. they do share its vision and even respect it, sort of, for going God, all the, the are insane. way into a direction of complete 
and utter inhumanity. A common saying among the Tsumitsi is uh. that instead of having a beast and a remnant mortal soul inside of it, the eldest just had two beasts. Some oh. notables of art include Sasha Vikos, who has turned themselves completely androgynous and is a very <laughs> radical member of the Sabat, known as their chief torturer. Radha oh. Vistri, who used to be the prince of Bistritz and is now a high-ranking member of the Sabat, himself originating in one of those breeding programs. Oh and my of course, god. Yes. Oh. The Count Dracula, who actually is a master of Koldunic sorcery, which is an even older form of magic that the Tsumitsi had access to before they adopted vicissitude. It's basically Uh, did you hear that fable? Yes. I hate it. Like an you avatar. hate that he's one of the worst style worst clan of vampires. Yes. Uh, the last explains all the pikes. Spirits of the land and element spears. bending. The young and self-interested clan Hakata, also known as the Lazarines or the Clan of Death, represents we'll breeding on. programs. And Count Dracula, who spirits of the land element bending. The young and self-interested clan. Element bending. Ha That's probably how he had all those. The impaling. Carter, also known as the Lazarines or the Clan of Death represents the archetypal vampire who is a corpse. Now, uh -oh. the thing about the Hakata uh -oh. is that uh -oh. they're less a clan than a bunch of bloodlines in a trench coat. They form huh. in the 21st century through a ritual called the Family Reunion, which united uh, the Giovanni, the Samedi, the Cappadocians, and many, many of their cousins. And because huh. they are composed of so many different groups, they have very different practices for embrace because they didn't just completely so it's literally just a bunch of smaller groups coming together cultures but much of the core of clan hakata is made up of groups like the giovanni who used to actually take up this particular clan slot in earlier editions or the dunsons or the putanescas who are very old mortal families who would go through generation and generation and generation and some of them would be embraced into the vampire aspect of the family because oh they so they literally point, live with their human parts Wow, that's um, that's interesting. The only clan that is completely outside of any of the major sects or ideologies, they are a little bit insular. Family, though not necessarily blood anymore, and trust count for everything among the Hakata. Yeah. And part of the reason for this is that they founded themselves as a self-defense thing, a last-ditch, desperate ah. effort because most of them got almost annihilated by the Second Inquisition. The clan has access to the disciplines Auspex, which is highly sharpened senses, Fortitude, which is supernatural toughness, and Oblivion, which they share with Clan La Sombra. But instead of being, you know, shadow bending or anything even remotely thematically related to shadow bending, uh, it's necromancy. What? Because of some obscure law technicality what the that hell? says that both of these things are related in the law like not well, why not just make it its own thing mechanically they why, why why not just make this its own thing like it's clearly necromancy is a lot different than shadow bending hey, hey, uh, just really completely different concepts but because of some obscure thing in the law they have to be put into one discipline. And so in That's practice, insane. what you have is an oblivion that is actually two different disciplines with completely different abilities, but because of how the rules work, in theory, unless the GM, which is probably going to do this, forbids it explicitly, uh -huh. you can pick from the abilities of necromancy and shadow bending like willy nilly, completely that's... annihilating the identity yeah, no, of wrong. the trademark ability of two really cool clans. And yeah. my question is, was it worth it? No. Was it really Obviously that important not. to convey mechanically to players that these two concepts are related within the law of the game? Or maybe was it too expensive to get another one of these beautiful icons you made? I just... I, 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 this feels like someone just really refused the idea of making a new one. Because they just didn't want to try at all. Kind of a... Hmm. Kind of a pain for me, but yeah. 
really don't get it, and it makes me mad. The clan bane is the painful kiss, which the kiss huh? is a slang term for when a vampire bites and drains someone, which usually is a very pleasant experience for the victim. But in the case of the Hikata, it's oh. even more excruciating than it should be. Now, it used to be that all these different bloodlines had their own little flaws, like the Samedi and the Cappadocians. They just straight up used to look like corpses. Or the Nagaraja had to consume the flesh of their victims in order to gain any sustenance. Which is interesting because this means they always have to kill the victim that they're draining. And yeah. also it takes a while to do it. But what they did, yeah. and I promise you this is 100% just game design reasons, is they said, well, here yeah, because of through magic they now all have the Giovanni clan bane. Why? And the old ones are no longer a thing. Which, let me tell you, a lot of game masters do not like to run it that way. The well, yeah, no one likes to run make things less cool or interesting. No one likes that, right, Fable? Yeah, nobody likes that. And for those who don't know, Fable is a DM, so he has a bigger say in this than I do. Clan compulsion that they commonly yes. suffer from is D &D kind of is, uh, Here's the thing, guys. I know this gets said a lot in certain channels, but... No D and D is better than bad D and D, which is one hundred percent true. The point of a tabletop game, no matter what it is, is supposed to be for fun for everyone. If for whatever reason you're not having fun, or it doesn't like, you don't vibe with a lot of the players, it's always best to have like a conversation with the GM or DM or storyteller or whatever they call themselves, depending on the tabletop always have a conversation to try to work something out but however if you gave it the old, if you gave it like a proper try and it still doesn't work it's okay to tell them i'm not really having fun i think i'm gonna go look for something else to do or try to be like it's better or i would say try to be like hey this aspect of the game isn't really letting me out can i change this just a bit yeah because this... you're because it's like something you're not really using or you can't use it effectively Yes. Also, for sure, when it comes to like depending on the game, don't be don't be a power player, and don't be a rules lawyer. Those are two types. Of those are two types of players that nobody likes dealing with. No one likes to deal with them. They're like, mm, actually, this ability doesn't allow them to fly. It just really allows them to jump really high. Yeah. yeah yes. Because <laughs> I I understand that tabletops have rules. But a lot of us see them more as guidelines than anything else. I mean, they basically just are guidelines to have fun with the game. Like, unless you're doing really important combat, there's no reason to, like, be such a stickler with the rules. Right. Weird, but I think very cool. It's called morbidity, and it's this oh. very strong drive to investigate death. This oh. could be diagnosing a medical problem with someone that they sense is dying, or it could be solving a murder mystery. The Hikata Antediluvian is the thing that unites them, by the way, because though oh. they are all various different bloodlines with different founders, they are all ultimately descended of Cappadocius. Another of the more kindred affairs involved... That sounds like a made-up name of silliness. Cappadocius. Cappadocius was actually diabolized by Augustus Giovanni, some oh. time ago, which is why he used to count as the antediluvian of Clan Giovanni. Some notable Hikata include Isabel Giovanni, who has infiltrated every single one of the major sects into like very high positions at one point or another. Pochtli, the founder of the Peace and Up bloodline, who uh. actually died in order to create the conditions that uh, led to the formation of the Hikata. And wow. the Capuchin, who is the de facto political leader of the Hikata, and who may not even be one of their clan descended of Cappadocius at all. The clandestine oh. and isolated oh. clan Banu Hakim, also known as the Asamites, or the clan of the hunt, represents oh, these the are probably somewhere in uh, the Islamic era. Archetypal... Or, I shouldn't say Islamic era. It's not the Middle... It's the Middle East. I'm just calling it the Middle East because it's Eastern Asia. Orient-type uh. vampire that is, like, from the Orient. Uh, sorry, like guys. Thing. I'm a I little I mean, yeah, technically this all is a long video. clans are from the Middle East because that was where okay, the first no. city was located. I have a personal fascination. I think they're talking about the first city in actual writing, which is located there. The first cities created are cre were created on the Fertile Crescent, but 
I'm not gonna go Kuban into it. Hakeem, I love them very if much. If I go into if I go into history rant, we're going to be here forever, Fable. They are sort of modeled after the I historical walk assassins. Away. You're still doing your rant. You can't do that, Fable. I'll change you to the wall. I slowly walk away <laughs> with the wall. <laughs> you can't walk away with the wall. I don't. I do so anyway. <laughs> Down to the idea that they lived in like a isolated mountain fortress called Alamut. And Whoa. when they do kill people for money, their main intended role in vampire society is as a sort of law enforcement. This oh. is also one of the main groups that they like to embrace from, specifically investigators, because they have this drive to hunt down, if you will, the truth, and a propensity for self-sacrifice for a higher cause. Oh. They also like to get learned people, scholars on board, if they prove that they have a lot of dedication Basically, to what they do. Basically, it's investigative people, like introspective people that are willing to look into things and try and find the truth. Observation period. They also kind of used to, like, not embrace oh. women. After a oh. team has been embraced, uh, they are subjected to a women. rigorous seven-year training program followed by another seven years of indenture to their master and if they fail it also sounds like they're trying to create the hasasin which is where the word assassin comes from just in vampire the masquerade mm. any of the test or if they show any amount of disobedience their master straight up just kills them probably oh. involving diablery too which is one of the reasons why oh. the Hakim have had a fairly strained relationship with the camarilla oh they like delaborizing oh they're vampire cannibals basically at times because in the camarilla that is considered the absolute worst crime a vampire could possibly commit. The clan has access to the discipline's blood sorcery, which is like the same thing that the Tremere have, the blood magic, celerity, which is super speed, and obfuscate, which allows them to become undetectable. In okay. earlier editions, they kind of had three different loadouts for disciplines because they had a warrior, a vizier, and a sorcerer cased. Uh, and their thing wasn't the same discipline as the Tremere. They had their own thing. It did have what? a greater focus on, like, blood magic in the actual literal sense of controlling blood. I mean, that's a lot more interesting and different. Why the heck Which did they change it? Which in a vampire it? society, you can imagine how scary that is. Yeah. The clan bane has changed a lot over the years. That can actually be extremely scary in a vampire society. <laughs> Just imagine, no, mm. you didn't drink any of that blood fable. Walks away with the wall. <laughs> Stop walking away with the wall. I refuse. <laughs> but no, you're right, that is actually incredibly scary. All reasons. Currently, it is the overwhelming urge when they taste <laughs> the blood of another vampire to diablerize that vampire because they are attracted fundamentally to the blood of evildoers that need to be punished. Oh. And in a sense, being a vampire is makes such you an evil. unbelievable transgression against the natural order that it makes that irresistible to the Banurag. So quite literally, they are a bunch of people that realize even vampires themselves are evil, so they feel this urge to just kill vampires. Huh. Now, it used to be that each of the three castes had their own little clan bane, but the one they all shared was that uh, their skin would grow darker with age. This what? is a real thing that used to be the case. What? And I guess someone at some point figured out. <laughs> yeah, uh, the image I'm <laughs> showing is, like um... The best idea to have yeah like that's a little, ever so hell? slightly a little bit problematic in line with their bane is their compulsion to pass judgment if ah. someone that they know or in their presence does something that they consider to be unethical they will feel an urge to drink from them to enact punishment by taking some of their blood which, of course, given that they're usually surrounded by vampires, mm. would lead to the problematic situation of it triggering mm. their clan bane. The Banu Hakim Antediluvian <laughs> is a guy called Hakim. And the story huh. that the Banu Hakim tell about him is that he basically embraced himself as a mortal by killing two immensely powerful vampires of the second generation. And wow, that's insane. As punishment for their corruption. Some claim that his goal is to exterminate all vampires, 
which is almost mm. definitely not true. But it's a convenient yeah. way to say, oh, those damned foreigners. Some notable Banu Hakim include Urshulgi, who rather recently oh. awoke from Torpor and looked around, just immediately took control of the clan and said, hang on, who is this Islam guy? And why are you worshipping him instead uh. of Hakim? Repent your idolatry or you will be destroyed immediately. The skinless one, dear God. Which That's has kind horrifying. of led to a schism that is currently plaguing the clan, where a lot of Banu Hakim sort of went to the Camarilla. Fatima al Fakadi, who for a time mm -hmm. was one of their most effective assassins, and probably the first woman to ever be embraced into the clan. And Montgomery Kirby. So who one of their elders woke up and decided, I'm changing things how they are now. Which is. The can be horrifying for vampires because the older they are, they're usually stronger. Young Sabat aligned or formerly right. Sabat aligned Banu Hakim, who through sheer luck in the early 1990s managed to become immensely powerful by Diablo rising Mithras, the Ventru Prince of London. Oh. The nomadic and deceitful clan Ravnos, also known Ravnos. as the Haunted or the Clan of Seekers, is supposed to represent the vampiric archetype of uh how do i say this how do i best put this the gypsies what they're basically the idea is that they're gypsies that will sneak into your house <laughs> what fable do you know yeah. it's basically that thing where people were afraid of gypsies just because they were different kind of like how they did with well Throughout history, people have always done like what they did when Christians first arrived, and they treated them like shit because they didn't go out and celebrate God through, you know, talking about how great they are and shouting. It's similar to that also, you know, they do with all kinds of religious people. I'm not going to go into other things because, you know. But yeah, people treat gypsies like crap. I've always treated them like crap. Because they are, have this worry or fear that people tell lies about people tell lies about them all the time, and would basically say, "Oh, they do this. They, that's why they're so different from us." You know the usual, out things that people say about outsiders, or people that just aren't like them. Yeah. <laughs> so of course, there's gonna be one where they're vampires. Nice. And drink your blood. Look, you I don't remember this ever being a thing, something that uh, they said about gypsies or anything that I've ever read. But then again, I don't know all the accusations that people made against them. I'd rather not know, to be honest. It is that the Vampire the Masquerade, the first book, came out in 1991. Cultural like sensitivities <laughs> were a bit different back then. Yeah. We're talking about like White Wolf. Which, even in 1994, which was a few years after Vampire came out, published this, World what? of Darkness Gypsies. That's what? the book where they had a real-life category of minority groups that they took and oh made my God. mechanically distinct magical beings like distinct from humans in the oh same way that like vampires God. or werewolves or changelings are in the world of this darkness is so bad. Small, which is like wild that they thought this was a cool thing to do even back then but yes the core of the ravnos clan is of and traveling with usually the various different ethnic groups descended of the roma in the west oh. at least like they're a whole different clan in india that basically oh. has very little to do with the rest of the world basically they especially the new the, the thing you could just change it to be to where they move with traveling groups because that makes sense since they don't always stay in one place it would be very advantageous for a vampire to do that but no we got this has changed a lot of the baggage that comes with this without having to retcon anything okay. into like reframing them a little bit as trickster daredevil type people and like just going away from ethnicity for a moment those are really the preferred group that the Ravnos embrace from adrenaline junkies and like social uh. outcasts that manage to make their own way in life trailblazers okay. unperturbed with the strict rules of polite society 
who like to pull pranks every once in a while, have a good sense of humor, and want to use their eternal unlife to actually see something of the world. In other words, absolute legends. The clan has access so, like, to the can animalism, which is control over animals, obfuscate, which allows them to become undetectable, and presence, which is alluring charisma. The latter okay. two form the amalgam power called chemistry, which used to be actually a discipline that they had, along with fortitude once again a change i'm not particularly happy with for blah, yeah. blah, 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 reasons we've already gone into but basically chemistry allows them to create illusions to fool other people their clan bane is doomed which is in no what? way evocative of what that actually mechanically means even though it makes sense in the law once again and basically it means they need to sleep in a different location every night now i'm not talking oh. like the other side of the room but at least a kilometer away their common compulsion hmm. is to tempt fate which really is just the classic adrenaline junkie move of doing something extremely dangerous for no other reason than it would be cool. The Ravnos Antediluvian is called Zapatasura, but he's also known as Drakian, and he very, oh. very notably woke up from Torpor in 1999, sending literally every single Ravnos in the entire world into a homicidal frenzy for oh, a week. Wow. This obviously almost entirely destroyed the whole clan. The makes overwhelming sense. majority of Ravnos just died during this time. And like that they makes used sense. incredibly God. powerful Eastern vampires, which are a different category of vampires called Quajin, uh, which are not even probably related to the vampires and vampire the masquerade. And wizards used a bunch of orbital satellite nukes what? to stop this guy. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> w wizards use orbital satellite nukes just to, to kill this guy because well he was making a bunch of vampires go crazy which understandably you don't want a bunch of vampires going crazy all over the world from the just Can I just hear that category again? of vampires called Quajin uh, which are not even probably related to the vampires and vampire the masquerade and wizards used a bunch of orbital <laughs> satellite nukes <laughs> to stop it. this guy from the just path of destruction he was cutting through india now you know oh this happened in india antediluvians can be kind of spooky some notable Ralph because they can go they basically can do world changing shit in a second of being alive or waking up which uh I can understand why uh, some of them want to deny their even existence, because they're kind of horrifying. Those include Khalil Ravana, who is deeply addicted to the act of diablerie. Alexis Sorokin, an unparalleled master thief who is being hunted by the Camarilla. And Sinevea, a rather ancient Ravnos, who prefers to spend her time mentoring younger groups of vampires and sometimes other supernatural beings, usually while pretending to not be a vampire at all. The huh. devout and pestilential clan ministry, also known as the corruptors or the followers of Set, huh. represents the kind of demonic vampire that is just evil and opposed to all things that are good and proper Christian stuff. Oh. It functions as a sort of vampire Dem church that puts out the official vampire religion, obviously, in what? their view. Uh, and it kind of functions in practice as like an anti-real church, which instead of espousing virtues, espouses doing sin. And by that, I mean like all of the sin. They don't because their because their creator is Cain, the first murderer. Oh my God! Don't just like indulging in extreme hedonism, but also actively annihilating the compassionate fabric of society they are serious cultists and those are also like uh, the exact kind of people that they want in their clan for their embrace they're usually mortals who were already involved with their splintered and fractured devil cults while they were alive and also you can become a follower of set no matter what clan you're from even as a vampire you can essentially convert that doesn't huh. mean that you like change your abilities and get a new clan bane but you are fully accepted into the clan and will be taught their powers the whole okay. embracing evil and corruption and destructive hedonistic indulgence does actually have a religious purpose and that they believe uh. that you need to go to the absolute limits 
of experience in order to be able to free yourself from the flesh prison that your soul is trapped in. And becoming a vampire for them is just the first step on that journey and okay. once you have achieved that you'll be in some sort of like perverse nirvana state that they all want to achieve this plays Weird. heavily into the various doomsday cult aspects that they also have the clan has access to the disciplines obfuscate which allows them to become undetectable presence which is alluring charisma and protean which allows them to gain animal traits and transform into animals, here usually snakes. This Why discipline snakes? used to be called Serpentis, and it was much more focused. Oh, because the snake that tricked Adam and Eve. Okay, that's why. On, like, magic and magical aspects, but yet again, a whole clan's mechanical identity really needed to be condensed down into a single amalgam power. Honestly, if Vampire 5 didn't are. have the best hunger in humanity mechanics by like a light year of all the additions, I would despise it. The clan bane is that they absolutely abhor the light, and not just sunlight, but any bright light. Oh. Even like a full moon. You know, they don't, it doesn't hurt them specifically, but they find it very irritating. And if they ever are exposed to sunlight, it is especially damaging to them. Their clan compulsion is transgression, which is about manipulating people into breaking their most sacred ethical and moral precepts. Wow. Spreading corruption everywhere they go. The ministry That's antediluvian is up. none other than the Egyptian god Set, oh. which is why most of the clan is situated in and around Europe. And the Well, Set is the god of darkness and chaos, so that makes and sense. Well, sort of region and the thing about said is that he worships a well it's not even demonic anymore sort of entity that exists mm. in the great void and all it wants to do is destroy and be evil and spread oh. corruption some wow. notable ministers include kementiri who is a corruptor so vile that the camarilla created a whole slew of extremely powerful institutions just to hunt her down. Makes Nefertiti, sense. a very powerful, pure, unadulterated narcissist who sees herself uh. as the rightful vampire queen of all of Europe. And wow. she has managed to turn several animals, especially snakes, into vampires. What? And Hesha Ruhadze, a scholar of the occult so renowned that his sire actually renamed himself into Abu Ruhadze. So, like, the father of Ruhadze. Wow, that's... It, it's something else when someone renames themselves to just show that they were the one that created also, you. Also, he has, like, a really cool right. monocle. And that's it. <laughs> that's the 13 clans. There is also something called caitiff, which is vampires uh. that don't know what their clan is. They sometimes have very interesting combinations of disciplines and are not really bound to the disciplines of their clan, which is sometimes the exact reason why their sire abandoned them. While that uh. may sound very cool, bear in mind that caitiff are the absolute lowest of the low in vampire society. No one likes them, uh. no one wants that anything to do with them. It's not really advisable to play one. So there you go. Even if before watching this you knew nothing about Vampire the Masquerade, now you have a functional, basic knowledge of what you maybe should be aware of if you're going to play the game. There okay. is a lot of VTM lore out there, and that isn't even touching on all of the other World of Darkness properties. Even the clans I mentioned have, like, huge swathes that I couldn't even begin to get into. If you found any of them particularly interesting, I highly recommend the White Wolf Wiki for further mm. information. Or if you okay. prefer video learning, I can recommend the Primogen's channel, who has a lot of in-depth videos on okay. most of the clans. If you want to see how Vampire the Masquerade is actually played, check out L.A. by Night, which is an actual play podcast set in the California Anarch Free State, uh, with some tremendous characters cool. played by very talented actors, and a game master that is so excellent, I personally count him among probably like the top five That's cool. in the entire world for any system. They even have like a only recently embraced fish out of water, don't know what is going on type character, which is excellent because they explain to her a lot of the important things that are the case about the vampire world. So it's great for people who have no idea about the law. And look, mm. ultimately, while they may be interesting, it doesn't matter how much of lore you consume of Vampire the Masquerade, ultimately what the game experience is about around most tables 
is for it to be a game of personal horror. True. Your relationships uh, and your struggles with the vampiric condition, the political maneuvering inside a very rich and, dare I say, realistic world packed full of mystery. Mm. Thank you so much for watching this monstrous video. Yeah, like, this comment, is monstrous. Subscribe, share this to your relevant communities, but do not spam them. So to supporting me on Patreon or Subscribestar, buying some of my merchandise or my short story collection. And in that spirit, boy, this was a long one. Probably the longest video I've ever done. I don't know why I did this. I woke uh, up one morning and I decided, you know do what? Do choose violence. Do, like, just take two weeks out of the video making schedule to work like a long, long time every day to get this done. And <laughs> it's basically like suspended everything else in my life to do this. Mm. Uh, very, very strange. But I've, I've been enjoying it. So maybe well, I'm glad if you like this sort of long form least. content, five people who are still watching this at the end of the video, leave a comment. And in that spirit, see you around, cunts. Well, I wasn't expecting that last bit, but, uh... <laughs> Is he Australian? I think so. Because if he's Australian, that made so much sense. Yes, it does. Uh, so, if you guys want to... Listen, if this video somehow gets to... What would you say? How much do you want for the... How many likes do you want for um, uh, the Changeling video that's three hours long? At least... Two. <laughs> we'll go with 200 then. 200 likes on this video. And we'll watch the Changeling one. Because I know F Fable is curious about it. We're doomed. We're only ever going to get like 300 at best. It's just horrified. If we get 300, I'll be impressed by myself. But yeah. Thank you all so much. If you like these videos... Well, tell us. If you want us to watch different things, tell us. If you have other videos for us to watch, tell us. And if you want to join this nice community that I'm creating, go to the Discord. Or, yeah, subscribe. Anyway, thank you all so much, and we'll see you later.